Hi, AJ. G'day, Bo. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I wanted to talk about a very um, controversial and interesting topic for me today mm -hmm. on abortion. Mm -hmm. um, it's of interest to me because I've had two abortions myself. Yeah. Something that I'm not proud of, but something that I have to deal with. And yeah. I feel there's many women in my situation who yes. have to deal with that. Yeah. yeah. And I also feel there's many of um, other people involved in the decision process that um, need to um, face the responsibility that they were involved in those decisions as well. Sure, like many men, for instance, were involved in the decision of their wives or partners or, or yes. occasional partner being yeah. ha giving an abortion, having an abortion, and therefore many of those men bear a fair degree of responsibility as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, I've got lots of questions today. Sure. Okay, we might not get through it all, so there could possibly be part two yeah, no if worries. we need to. That's fine. Um, but yeah, I mentioned as, as just starting that it's very controversial and it has been throughout our society's history um, forever, I dare say, mm -hmm. um, because of the moral issues that we've not faced about it, some of the ethical issues, political issues and the practical issues of it that, mm -hmm. that surround the, the topic abortion mm, and the medical, act of abortion. Medical issues and all yeah. sorts of issues, yeah, yeah. I agree. So. Um, so, moral issues, AJ, maybe that's probably a good one to start on, I think. And, and then <laughs> well, I'm going to go into lots of other topics as well, which hopefully will flow. Yeah, well, I feel probably all of the issues need to be resolved. But obviously, the moral issues, um, there, are, there is a lot of controversy around the moral issues themselves. So, so the main reason why there's controversy is because everybody, basically, when it comes to a moral opinion, has a different opinion. And what I would like to probably say first up is that what I would like to present is not my own opinion of, a, of, of the issue, but rather what I've observed through 2,000 years of my life of the issue in the spirit world, because I've had the advantage over most people in the sense that I've watched the entry of these uh, aborted children come to the spirit world. So therefore I had the ability to see, see it from all angles, what's going on for the mother, what's going on for the father, what's going on for society, and also what's going on for the child. And I feel that's probably the most important issue as to what really is going on for the child. But um, I want to say probably first up with this issue and any other moral issue that I ever discuss with people, it's important to understand the difference between the presentation of truth about the issue and the issue of judgment or moral judgment that people have. So I do not have any moral judgment, for example, for a murderer. I don't have any moral judgment of a rapist. I don't have any ju moral judgment of many other, uh, what we would call on earth, uh, like violent type of crimes. I don't have any moral judgment for the person who actually per does those crimes. I do, though, want to state the truth about the effects of these crimes and the effects on love and the effects on the people that these crimes are perpetrated against, mm -hmm. and also the effect of we just wait for that go, the effects of um, on, so on the on the perpetrator of these particular of these particular things that happen, and so for some people currently on the earth, uh, abortion is is viewed as a crime and therefore they have a lot of moral judgment to anybody who does or, 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 or actually uh, commits that crime. I don't have that same moral judgment. So, so I want to help any person to become more loving, and that includes helping a murderer or a rapist or a, a person who other people judge as an abortionist or, or whatever. And I, and I feel it's very important to state up front. Secondly, it's very important to state up front, I feel, with this particular subject that there is actually no need for anybody to have any judgment on, upon any crime. The main reason why we have judgment is because we have a lot of hurt about the issues inside of us. Uh, on, on either side of the judgment fence, we have a lot of hurt. And the more hurt you release internally about any of these issues, the less judgment you actually feel. That doesn't mean, though, that the, the issue, whatever the issue is, for example, the issue of murder, that doesn't mean that the issue of murder um, does not have a moral answer. But so I'm not saying that that I am amoral when it comes to uh, mm. any of these issues because I'm very definitely I've got some very definite 
things that I've observed from the spirit world and therefore have some very, very firm moral stances about these particular issues. However, um, I don't feel the persons who commit these particular things, you know, these things against the morality, need to be judged in any way. They just need to have some assistance, if they want it even. They don't, I, don't, I don't need to force it upon them. So any person who's listening to this interview need to bear in mind that I, I'm not trying to force any moral stance upon them. I am just going to be presenting God's stance to you and it's up to you to make your own choices and decisions like it always is. Well, right? yeah, well going through all of the questions that actually puts me a little bit more at ease and makes me feel a little bit more comfortable about yeah. asking these questions sure. because then I know you're not judging me and yeah. I actually feel that as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. And you know that I love you and care about you. We've known each other long enough now yeah. to know that and I haven't treated you any different where, after you told me you had an abortion than, than before. No, yeah. you never have. And that I'm grateful for. Yeah. <laughs> so look, let's talk about the definition of abortion first of all. Wikipedia defined defined abortion as a termination of a pregnancy by the removal or expulsion from the uterus of a fetus or embryo prior to viability. Mm -hmm. Now we'll come back to so that. So then there's a definition of viability. Yes, yep. we'll come back to that. Yep. And then the Webster Dictionary defines it as the act of giving premature birth, particularly the expulsion of the human fetus prematurely or before it is capable of sustaining life. Right. Okay, so there so is there such a time when the fetus or embryo can be classified prior to viability or before it is capable of sustaining life? All right, so that's a, that's a fairly important question. Um, the answer, bluntly, is no. From God's perspective and what you observe in the spirit world, when a couple get together and they have sex, at the moment of, the, of conception, is the moment that the soul of the child has actually uh, been attached to the spirit body and physical body that the, that the conceived uh, embryo, if you like, it's not even an embryo at that point, it's just mm -hmm. a cell's dividing. And, and this happens within a few moments of, of conception. And when I say a few moments, not a very long period at all. And in fact, in many cases, if the, if the woman in particular is sensitive to that, uh, that attachment of the soul to, to the growing, uh, shall we call it, organism within the womb at that point, then uh, she will also feel that the, that conception has taken place because she will be able to feel and sense the soul of the, of the child already. Yep. I must admit, um, <laughs> this wasn't part of my questions, but yeah. I must admit um, the two pregnancies that I aborted, I didn't feel that. But at the age later on in life, around 40, I fell pregnant again and I knew and you felt instantly it. that I was pregnant. Exactly. And when I told my husband at the time, how would you know that? Exactly. I instantly knew. The reason why at the earlier stages uh, you didn't feel it is because the, hu the human mind has a, a large... Uh, Denial has a large effect on what you feel. And the human mind in denial has a very large effect on what it feels from its own, from, from its own body even. So there, there are many people who feel very little pain in their own body and yet as soon as they connect, they, they stop using denial as a, as a tool to control what happens to their body, then they start feeling the pains in the different body. And it's a similar principle when it comes to pregnancy, although pregnancy isn't a pain in the body. But, but if, a, if the mind is in denial and does not want to be pregnant, mm. then that has a very, very large oh. effect on whether the person is sensitive to the pregnancy actually occurring. And that was the case in my first two pregnancies, but yes. in the third pregnancy I was desiring it. That's correct. Yes. So since you were desiring it, you were now open to the knowing of it, mm. and the instant you became pregnant, you knew straight away. Mm. And, and the reason why is because the, the little tiny soul if we could call it, it's a, it's, a, it's a soul in their first incarnation. It's not a reincarnated soul, but a first incarnation soul that's, that's now attached to those organisms which become bodies growing in you. There's two bodies growing inside of uh, the womb. One is a physical body and the other is a, a, a spirit body. They look almost identical to each other as they grow. Genetic, their genetic structure is very similar. And, and as they grow, uh, eventually the woman generally becomes aware because of the changes to her body, but, but she is capable of being aware right from the moment mm. of conception. Mm. Mm. Thank you.